can't tell her. Come here. What are you so excited about? What's the matter with you? I don't know, Abbott. I'm all mixed up. What do you mean? In my room, I got a big picture of Lauren Bacall on the ceiling. Uh, yes. On my dresser, I, I, I got a picture of Rita Hayworth. And on the walls, I got two pictures of Betty Grable and Yvonne DiCarlo under my pillow. And then I got a picture of Dorothy Lamour in her sarong, and I think I'm going nuts. Why? All night long, I keep dreaming of Gene Autry's horse. Oh. <laughs> Costello, what are you doing with all those pictures in your room? Well, it's time for me to put on my annual spring play, and I'm looking for my leading lady. I think I'll pick Hedy Lamar this year to play the big love scene with me. Hedy Lamar is a great actress, naturally, but uh, she'd make a fool of you in two minutes. Yeah, but just think of those two minutes. Oh. <laughs> Will you please talk, Sam? Hey, what play, what play are you doing this year? Well, I was due to the meat shortage. I thought I would do that famous old play about meat. About meat? Yeah. You dummy, there's no play about me. Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. What about A.B.'s Irish? Oh, come on. And Shakespeare's play about me, The Merchant of Venice. Oh, will you please cut it out? Cut it out? And then there was Hamlet, with the famous line, to beat or not to beat. <laughs> then there was Porky and Beth, Liver, come back to me. Do you know what you're saying? They even wrote a picture about the cow that backed into the meat grinder. Now, well, what was the name of that? Lost. Yes, I know you did. Look, will you cut it out, please? Uh, what's your play all about? All it starts with me kissing a leading lady for 20 minutes. Uh, you kissed a leading lady for 20 minutes? Yep. Uh, then what happened? The curtain goes up and the play starts. Oh, I see. You tell me that's no way to write a play. In order to write a play, you've got to collect your data. What was that? Yeah, you've got to collect your data. Where's your data? He's home with my mama. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean the data for your drama. Where's your drama? He's home with my grandpa. No, 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 no. <laughs> Look, Castella, what, 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 uh, by the way, what about me? Uh, uh, do I have a part in the play? Oh, yeah, but you got a beautiful part. Well. As the play opens, yeah. they find you drowning in a bathtub. But the water is pouring in over your head. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Do, do I have any lines? Oh, yeah, you got two lines. Uh, what are they? Glob, glob. <laughs> that's all. What do you mean, that's all? You see, Abbott, this play is a mystery. Well, what am I doing in the bathtub? That's the mystery. <laughs> Suddenly, a shot is heard. Wait a minute. Do I get hit? Yeah. Where? Right between the towel rack and a soap dish. <laughs> That's the worst thing I've ever heard. Well, if you don't like that, I've got a historical play. It's a story of the first Indian Gypsy Rose Lee. The first Indian Gypsy Rose Lee? Yes. Yeah, strip poker hunter. Say... Uh, <laughs> listen, Costello, you can't... <laughs> you can't bring a play in here... At the last minute, put it on the air tonight. Why, the NBC censor has to see and hear it first. Censor? Certainly. What has the censor got to do with my play? Well, your your play might contain some naughty words. Here, here, rabbit. Well, now, wait it's a not minute. I'm talking like that. After all, I am uh, a scout. Uh, I'm, I'm a scout of the first I order. understand that part is all right. You, you won't find any naughty words in my play. I understand. <laughs> all right. All right. I got it. <laughs> Listen, we'll, see about, we'll see about that. You go ahead and read your play, and I'll pretend that I'm the censor. Now, if I hear one naughty word, look, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll ring this little bell. You see this little bell I have in my hand? If you hear a naughty word. I'll ring it like that. Okay. Now, can you hear that all right? Sure. All right, now go ahead. <laughs> okay. Now, as my play opens, a boy and a girl are riding along the country road, far from the city's hustle and bustle. Ah, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> you can't say bustle. Well, I have to say bustle. This takes place in the back country. Uh, Right near the county seat. Now, listen. <laughs> I'm sorry, Costello, but your bustle is out. My bustle is out? Yes. That's just the way I'm thrilled. Well, <laughs> now, please go on with your story. Okay. All right. Well, if the boy and girl are riding along, he suddenly stops the car. Ah, now, ah, 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 wait a minute. Uh, they've got to keep on riding. But the car is out again. I'm sorry, you have to change it. The car ran into a tree. You'll have to change it. There's a too much old baby sitting in the middle of the road crying. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Yes. Then you change it. Well, uh, <laughs> Can you please continue? Continue oh, playing. Yeah. Uh, suddenly the boy sees bright lights and hears music coming from a saloon. Uh, uh, no saloon. Here's the music coming from a roadhouse. Uh, no, no roadhouse. There's a choir singing Sweet Adeline. <laughs> Try and get out of that one. All right. Go ahead, go ahead, go on. Now, make some of it. Anyway, the boy walks up to the door of the cafe, and he decides to step in. Uh, just... No, 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 no. You can't.
can't say step in. I'm sorry, it was a slip. Ah! <laughs> Wait a minute. You can't say slip. All right. I, I can't say slip. No, no, that also comes under the yes uh, census ban. Underwear? Uh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. You, you can't say underwear. Well, uh, you know how those things sit up on you. Uh, <laughs> you go on with your story, please. Go ahead. Okay. Tell me the girl that's had a terrific dream. It's a boy turns and she's a big ferocious animal running out of the woods. Bear? No, he had a hat and coat on. I... Again. <laughs> what kind of sense are you? Will you please go on? Okay. Now, will I find my place? Go I got ahead, it. Uh, I got it. Now, the bear grabs the boy in his powerful arms and crushes him until he can hardly breathe. He just stands there and pins. Ah, uh, wait a minute. No pants. Okay, I'll drop the pants. Uh, okay. wait a minute. <laughs> That's better. Uh, no, 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 no. I think it's better. Costello, quit acting so smart. Oh, that's all right, Mr. 
but I think Costello is a very clever little man. In fact, Costello, I have a little problem I'd like to have you help me with. Uh, tell me, how many hairs does a pig have? I don't know. Well, the next time you shave, count them. <laughs> certainly told Costello off that time, dear. <laughs> I think you're wonderful. You're my little potato bug. Oh, no, get it, dear. You're my little potato bug. Oh, no, I insist you're my little potato bug. <laughs> and I insist you're my little potato bug. Well, if anybody's out there with a flitch gun, what are you waiting for? <laughs> That's enough, Costello. Get out of my apartment and don't ever come in here again. <clears throat> well, you've done it again, Costello. Why do you always have to be so mean? I don't know. Ah, uh, you don't. Know. I'm just a tramp hitchhiking down the highway of life. I'm just a foreigner looking for Flora. Please don't tell Dick Tracy on me. If you do, he won't let me work for him anymore. You work for this Dick Tracy? Yeah, I pose for those pictures of B.O. Plenty. Uh, <laughs> come on, Costelli. You still haven't found your leading lady. Oh, uh, pal, don't, monsieur. Will you hold the door open for me? Hey, look, Costello. It's Mrs. Niles' French maid, Fifi LeBlanc. Hello, Fifi. Oh, Monsieur Costello, you cute little man, you. Mon petit ami, mon cher, cher ami. Vous êtes le plus bel homme du monde. Ah, merci, buck ups and praise be. <laughs> hey, Fifi, here we are. I want to look at you. Good, good. You're just a girl for my little lady. Monsieur Costello, you mean I look like an actor? Oh, you have such beautiful eyes. With you as my leading lady, we will climb to such heights. It will make us dizzy. Oh, yes, but you have a head start. Hey. Uh, <laughs> Costello, Phoebe couldn't be your leading lady. She doesn't speak English. Sure, she will do the play in French. Oh, you speak the French, monsieur? Ah, sure does. Ah, sure does. Ah, from the south of France. <laughs> I was reading the other guy's part. Oh, to be back in Paris, to promenade down the Champs Elysees, through the Montmartre, under the Arc de Triomphe. Not to mention the Rudy Lapoo and the boys de Bologna. Costello, what are you doing? Ah, but you forget that I am the descendant of that great Frenchman, Francois of Villon. But Francois Villon was a vagabond and a bum. I mean, I descended from that greater Frenchman, the Duke of Burgundy. What? <laughs> the Duke of Burgundy was a miserable traitor. I mean, the greatest of all Frenchmen. His Majesty, King Louis XI. But he was an imbecile and an idiot. Shake hands with a New Jersey jerk. Come here, Costello. Yes, sir. Uh, look who I brought in to direct your play tonight. Yes, sir. It's the great Professor Melonhead. Yes, sir. Ah, oh, Melonhead. There he is, coming down the hall. There he is now. Well, well, well. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm one of Broadway's greatest actors. Good old Broadway boys. That's where I shine. It looks like that's where you just came from, Broadway. <laughs> Never mind yeah. where I came from. Broadway is where I shine. That's not the only place you shine. <laughs> Get a little of that naked scar. Hey, you know, Melonhead, you should have been in a great Broadway play called Harvey. Harvey? With that bald head, you could have played the rabbit. Wait a minute. The rabbit is invisible. That's you, the invisible hair. <laughs> <laughs> Just a minute, Costello. You're speaking to a man who has acted all over the world. I speak French, Greek, Russian, Italian. Syrian. How's your person? Oh, she just had kittens. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know that's a peachy joke, Melonhead? Yeah. I think I'll pull it on Abbott. Hey, Abbott! How many languages do you speak? Oh, I speak French, German, Scotch, Hindu. How's your person? I don't speak Persian. Now, what am I going to do with the cat? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Melonhead, let's get on with the play. All right, please. Mr. Rabbit, fine. I have the cast all ready. Uh, Mrs. Niles, will you step in here, please? Oh, no. Mrs. Niles, what's she doing here? Costello, I'm going to be your wife. Give me your kiss, boy! I'm a divorce! <laughs> oh, no, you fool. I'm just going to play your wife. If you're going to be my wife, I don't want to play. Quiet, Costello. Professor. No, I'm Quiet, not will not you please? Keep wife. the remarks to yourself. Who else is in the sketch, uh, Well, Professor? the part of Costello's daughter will be played by the lovely French maid, Fifi LeBlanc. Uh, come here, Fifi. Here I am, Monsieur Melonhead. <laughs> Is she going to be my daughter? That's right. Fifi, Fifi is your daughter. That's the way I wrote it. Fifi, come here and kiss your poor old father. Oh, my mama, dear.
He actually kissed me. Hey, Abbott, this melon head is a great writer. Never mind, never mind, Costello. Come on now. Will the cast please take their places? <laughs> Mr. Niles, please set the scene. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we present a stirring drama of the frozen north entitled They Just Got Wind of Costello in Alaska or Spellbound. <laughs> As the scene opens, we find Costello and his wife in their cabin in the frozen reaches of the far north. The time is winter and the weather is bitterly cold. Hey, listen, Ma. One of them boys from Hollywood and Brian is lost. <laughs> Nice part for a wolf, ain't it? <laughs> no other time. Get... Oh, that's a blizzard of howling outside. It's been a long, long, hard winter. What's the date today, Paul? I'm in the 49th. December the 49th? It's so cold, January is afraid to show up. <laughs> B-R-R. B-R-R. It's your wrist cold. Oh. <laughs> Get out, tell the joke. <laughs> We've got to get out of this country, Paul, before we freeze us to death. Yeah, but we ain't got any dogs, Ma. Just look at the ad in this paper. Eskimo Spitz dog, five dollars a piece. Eskimo Spitz dog? Yeah. I'll bet you ten to one he can't do it. <laughs> hey, Ma, where's, where, where's our daughter? She's out in the barn and milking the cow. Well, she ought to be in here helping me milk these laughs. <laughs> you got to keep an eye on our daughter. Last night, she was out gallivanting with Tommy Krasner. My daughter gallivanting with Tommy Krasner? Gallivanting? Ma, give me my gun. Okay, Paul, I'll, I'll get you the gun. Here's the gun, Paul. Never mind, I don't need it now. I just looked up gallivanting in the dictionary. It's all right. <laughs> okay, Priscilla, that was fine. Now, this is the part where your daughter, Fifi, comes in. It's about time. That's what I've been waiting for. All right. Woo! Go ahead, Go ahead Fifi. Uh-huh. Read your lines. Abbott, with her lines, you don't have to read them. Uh, <laughs> don't interrupt the sketch, Costello. Speak up, Fifi. Bonjour, Mama, and hello to you, Papa, you great big gorgeous man. Paul, oh, where did your daughter get that French accent? Ah, such a child would have my feet snapping my Paris daughter. <laughs> Daughter, we've been waiting for you all. Yes, Fifi. Come over here and kiss your poor old father. Oh, really <laughs> you I love you, my darling papa. <laughs> <laughs> Fifi, you should have been here two pages ago. <laughs> kiss your old father again. Come on, take it easy. I'll take it easy. Costello, will you cut it out? Uh, Costello, do you hear me? That line is not in the script. Uh, you don't know what you're doing. The line may not be in the script, but brother, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Costello, Costello, will you please get on with the play? The blizzard is raging outside. Look, it's bitter cold. You're freezing and you've got to thaw out. Now, do you know what you do? Yeah. Fifi, come here and kiss your paw <laughs> Costello, the room is cold. Pick up that dried out old log and throw it on the fire. Okay. Oh, put me down. Costello, will you be quiet? Now, now we're coming to the final scene of the play. It's getting colder and colder outside. You realize you must go for help. So you take your wife in your arms and you kiss her goodbye. Come on, Ma. He knows it's cold, Ma. I'm over here. Put down that dog. <laughs> you know, it was them long ears that fooled me, Ma. Cut it out, Costello. Now, this is where you say goodbye to your loving daughter. <laughs> daughter? <laughs> Come here. 